beast, that the image of the beast should both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. <coughs> I got a frog in my throat. The Antichrist. At this point in time, is it not safe to say there's supernatural stuff going on? Does that say anyone agree with that? Okay. Now, I could go into the modern age type stuff and say maybe it's a hologram, well placed speakers. I mean, I've seen a bow speaker that's literally one inch by one inch, two of them stuck on top of each other, slightly opposed. They produce more sound than everything in this room. I've seen them. And that was five, six years ago. They're impressive. Bose has some amazing technology. Okay? It wouldn't take much to produce a mid-range speaker of that quality the size of a quarter. They can do it. Okay? So, we get technological. Maybe they'll have holograms at this point in time. You know? Maybe it'll be mechanical. Obviously, we can do some kind of mechanical stuff like that. You know? I'm sure we could. I mean, the Antichrist probably have unlimited resources. You have the whole world at his beck and call. He can make something like this happen. But honestly, at this point, is that what we really think is going to happen? I doubt it. With all the, he's called, this, this, and this, the false prophet is calling fire from heaven. Why does he need mechanical anything, holograph anything, electrical anything to make an image of a beast talk? He says, power was given unto him to do these things, to make the image speak, and for the image to kill. Maybe it's a robot with bazookas and rocket launchers and 50 cal machine guns or 30 mic mics. Who knows? All right. But honestly, I don't think I don't think so. At this point, if our discernment of the word is also true, that everyone who everyone will worship the beast, they're all going to give in. Obviously, there's some that won't, but I mean, they probably fled the Petra at this point in time, you know, or hiding out somewhere really well. But I don't think he's going to need it. He has supernatural power that he is displaying. He's displaying it so he can make people believe that the Antichrist is God. And we know he's going to do that because mid-tribulation. That's signified by the desecration of the temple. He's going to claim to be God. So we pretty much know some of the things that are going to happen. And he causes, 16, and he causes all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive the mark in their right hand and on their foreheads. And that no man might buy or sell, save that he have the mark or the name of the beast or the number of on his name. Upon, amongst everything else, the, the false prophet's going to do. He's going to make every. He's going to pass laws. I mean, your number. He's going to be the false prophet. <coughs> he's going to be able to make laws, any law he wants. He's number two man of the world. He will make it a global law. You can't buy without a mark. You can't sell without a mark. If you're caught without a mark, you're probably going to be arrested and forced to choose the mark. And if you don't, you're probably going to be executed. It stands to reason. They're not going to be facilitating anarchy or anything else. He wants world order. He wants you to take the mark. Why? Well, the mark is a willing choice. If you take the mark and you worship the image, you are doomed for hell. Now, they don't know that, and he ain't going to tell them that. He knows it. He's been kicked out of heaven. He can't even approach the heavenly realm anymore. So what's he going to do? Take every soul from God he can. And that's all he cares about. Last verse, 18. Here is wisdom. Let him that hath understanding count the number of the beast, for it is the number of a man. And his number is six hundred, three score, and six. Often you've heard it just 666. That's the fast way to say it. Of course, you could always say it like this. People are going to think you're really weird. They're just going to know what's three score. You know, because honestly, I'm about the whole scores and four score and however many years ago or whatever that thing is. It's one of those important documents we have. Why 666? What's God's favorite number? Seven is God's favorite number. coffee. Earlier, the word Trinity was used. How many sevens is that? How many is in the Trinity? Give a seven to each of them. Seven, seven, seven. Father, Spirit, or Father, Son, Holy Ghost. 
devil, antichrist, false prophet. Can he be 777? No. Why? Because he can't achieve it. 777's take you. That number is gone. So his number is the next closest number. Because if 7 is the number of completion, that means after 7 it goes back to 1. Well, I can't be 1. What's the next best number? 666. And that's why his number is 666. Because God is 777. Because he's perfect, perfect, perfect. And Satan's almost, almost, almost. <laughs> well, by his standard of definition, anyway. Now, by our comparison, you got to remember, he is above us. He's an angel. I mean, he's immortal already. So by the realm of like physics and boundaries, he goes back and forth between the earthly realm and the heavenly realm. You know, I mean, at some one point, he was the most beautiful of God's creation. So at that point in time, he probably was 666. Or, you know, that's as close as you could get. And he's fallen from grace, you know, but it's still his number. He's still an angel, obviously, because he can go back and forth. Well, not anymore at this point, but, you know, still. It's just, that's basically the logic behind it. If God's perfect, seven is a perfect number, seven days in a week, it's completion. 77s, 700, I mean, you just, you need sevens are all throughout Revelation. So much so that it just, I, I, if there's another explanation or possibility, I don't know it. I will be honest with you. I really don't. That's it. Chapter 12 and 13, all right? Yeah. All right. Does anybody have any questions, comments, concerns? All right. Let's get out of here. Father God, I thank you for this time together. I ask that you would just let the words of your revelation sink into our minds and into our hearts. I ask that you would just give us clarity, discernment, and just send us throughout the rest of the week. Cover us, guard us, and thank you for all that you put up with for your love for us. Because the more we study your word, the more we realize there is no reason whatsoever you should have any mercy or grace left over for us. But yet, because it is endless and boundless, it is deep as the ocean from east to west, Father God, we thank you for your patience with us and for not just doing it like a lot of us. I ask you to protect us as we go throughout our week and just bless us as we go. And I pray. Amen.